Hello, and welcome to week 11 of FCAO Introduction to Philosophy. Our focus this week is the rationalism of Descartes. You will read First Meditations, and our objective is to define rationalism and to compare the rationalist ideas of Plato and Descartes. Descartes' thorough examination of the concept of knowledge leaves little doubt that anything realized by the mind is more real than something perceived by the senses. While Plato believed knowledge is innate, Descartes' quest for knowledge and truth is based upon his method of systematic doubt. This unique approach challenges accepted notions of knowledge, both then and now. If you remember Descartes' four rules, never accept anything except for clear and distinct ideas. Divide each problem into as many parts as needed to solve it. Order your thoughts from simple to complex and always check thoroughly for oversights. Online, read the excerpt from Descartes' Meditations and answer the questions. When you're done, come back to this video and continue. For number one, what is the basis of his method? He said, quote, to demolish everything completely and start again right from the foundations. If I wanted to establish anything at all in the sciences that was stable and likely to last. Why does Descartes believe it is possible to doubt the senses? Well, according to him, sometimes it is difficult to tell one is not dreaming. But according to Descartes, what must be true even if we are dreaming? He says that there may be something so powerful that it can distort our thoughts. Therefore, his idea of the deceiver is this supreme power who's deliberately deceiving us. And the counter to this idea of the deceiver is that we have the ability to reason. We have the ability to think. And he concludes with cogito ergo sum. I am, I exist. Or sometimes you'll hear it as I think, therefore I am. When we compare Descartes and Plato, we can see that Plato believed that knowledge comes from within, whereas Descartes believed that by using reason, the answer could be found outside. Plato made statements without trying to back them up scientifically or factually, and Descartes concentrated on the idea that a person must have absolute certainty of something before it can be known. Our next lesson is defining empiricism. Our objectives are to define empiricism and to compare the two schools of rationalism and empiricism. Tabla rasa is a 
the mind is a blank slate. And a rationalist would reject this notion because they believe that knowledge comes through reason. Plato said that knowledge is found within through recollection, and Descartes believed in radical doubt. During the 17th and 18th centuries, not all important thinkers believed knowledge was gained through reason. In England, philosophers rejected arguments of the continental rationalists and supported empiricism. Empiricism is the idea that genuine knowledge is gained through the senses. The empiricists, led by Locke, Berkeley, and Hume, believed experience should be the base for knowing. The ideas of empiricism are familiar. Since experience is the best source of knowledge, relying on the five senses makes knowledge more believable. Also, facts must be able to be tested and observable before they are believed. So once again, philosophy is mired in a disagreement. This time, it's rationalism versus empiricism, which is right. You're going to define empiricism by combining the ideas of Locke and Hume. First, a little bit about these men. John Locke, 1632 to 1704, born in Somerset, England. No, not that John Locke. This John Locke. He had a Puritan upbringing. He studied Aristotle's logic and metaphysics, and he obtained a medical degree and actually worked as a doctor. After reading the work of Descartes, he turned his creative powers to philosophy. 1690, he wrote an essay concerning human understanding and two treatises of civil government. Both works have had tremendous impact on succeeding generations of philosophers and political theorists. He died at the age of 72. David Hume was born to Scottish parents in Edinburgh. He was friend to Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Adam Smith. And he wanted to study human nature by using methods of physical science. He is often referred to as a radical empiricist because he used different terminology to define the understanding of knowledge. He wrote an inquiry concerning human understanding in 1748. At this point, navigate your way online and complete the Locke and Hume epistemology reading, defining empiricism. Come back when you're done. Defining empiricism. Empiricism derives from the Greek word empiria, which means experience. The main idea of empiricism is that knowledge comes from the senses. Let us then suppose the mind to be, as we say, white paper, void of all characters, without any ideas. How comes it to be furnished? Whence comes it by the vast store which the busy and boundless fancy of man has painted on it with an almost endless variety? The main idea here is that the mind is a blank slate. Knowledge comes from the world outside of our minds. Experience gives us knowledge.
A violet by the impulse of such insensible particles of matter, of peculiar figures and bulks, and in different degrees and modifications of their motions, causes the ideas of the blue color and sweet scent of that flower to be produced in our minds. There is nothing like our ideas existing in the bodies themselves. Sensations like color, sound, smell, and taste come about because of our body's response to primary qualities. When we entertain any suspicion that a philosophical term is employed without any meaning or idea, as is but too frequent, we need but inquire from what impression is that supposed idea derived. The main idea here is that the mind can create ideas. Our minds are creative. When we think of a golden mountain, we only join two consistent ideas, gold and mountain, with which we were formerly acquainted. A virtuous horse we can conceive because from our feeling we can conceive virtue. So really, again, the main idea being that the mind can create ideas. The mind can find ways to put together ideas that are logically connected. Using the main ideas from those excerpts, I hope you created a broader definition of empiricism. Your definitions will vary, but it should include references to the following. Senses, experience, ideas, knowledge being created from within, and the idea that the mind puts ideas together. Thank you once again for another great week, and I look forward to next week. Take care.